In today's video, we are going to go over what is a decay chain, and this is a decay chain as it relates to radioactive decay. Now, before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Step by Step Science. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. When I look at my YouTube analytics, I see that more than 90% of the people who watch my videos have not subscribed. Please subscribe, click the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Leave me a nice comment, give me a thumbs up, and don't forget to share this video. And in addition to that, I have produced a bunch of other teaching and learning materials, which you can find on my Teachers Pay Teacher website, where they're looking for example problems, practice problems with all of the solutions, notes, activities you can do with online simulations. All of that is available at my Teachers Pay Teachers website. The link is in the description below. And this is Decay Chain. And of course, I've made other videos for radioactive decay, which you can find in the upper right hand corner of this video, but what is a decay chain? A decay chain is simply a series of radioactive decays of different radioactive products because most radioactive isotopes do not decay directly to a stable isotope. They go through a series of decays, a series of radioactive isotopes, and they end up at a stable isotope, which um, is commonly one of the isotopes of lead. So this is a decay chain, is a series of those decays. Sometimes they're actually called a decay series. All right, now, uh, we don't know when we have a sample of radioactive material, we don't know which nucleus is actually going to uh, um, decay, but they will decay spontaneously, and that leads us to this idea of half-life, and half-life is the time it takes for half of the initial number of parent isotopes to decay to their daughter products. The original material we often call the parent material, and then the products that are produced we call the daughter products. Now, half-life uh, there are great range in the half-life of radioactive isotopes. Bismuth 209, for example, I believe has the longest half-life. It's 2.01 times 10 to the 19 years. That's many, many years. And then polonium 212 is not the shortest, but it was one of the shorter ones I could find. And polonium 212 has a half-life of 299 nanoseconds, nano being 10 to the minus 9, like that. Okay, so that's just a brief overview of what is a decay chain, and now let's take a look at a couple of decay chains. So these are two that you can find. Um, these I just got off of Wikipedia, and you can see here this one is called the Actinium series. This one is called the Thorium series. This one it usually has a named after one of the uh, elements, the isotopes that is present in it. This one is not called the Uranium series because there's another one called the Uranium series. This one is called the thorium series because it starts with thorium. And if you look at this diagram, this is one way to present them. There's many different ways, but this is a common way. You can see you start here with uranium. This is uranium-235. Uranium has 92 protons. It has atomic number 92. And then this decay chain will show you the different decays that uranium will go through. And then it'll finally end up here at one of the stable isotopes of lead, this case lead. 207, and this is the thorium decay chain, and this shows you thorium will go through these decays and ends up at the stable isotope of lead, lead 208. And on this axis, so to speak, you can see here are the element names, or you could think of this also as the atomic numbers, uranium, protectium, thorium, actinium, radium, and so on, ending down here with lead. And you can see for each of these, on this decay chain, the information that's given is the element with the mass number and the atomic number. Then it has the half-life in years. So this is for uranium-235. The half-life is 7.04 times 10 to the 8 years. That's 704 million years. And then it shows you the decay that it goes through. So this, when you have uranium-235, it will undergo alpha decay. And when you have alpha decay, as you know, you lose four on the mass number, two on the atomic number, and therefore you end up with thorium-231, and that has a half-life of 25.52 hours. And then on this one, thorium will undergo beta-minus decay, and then you'll end up with protactium, and then you go to alpha decay, and you have actinium, and then you, actinium can either go alpha or beta minus. Usually one is much more common than the other, but if it was to undergo beta minus, then you go back to thorium, and then you go down to francium and radium, and then you go through all of those steps, and you end up down here at lead 207. It's the same thing for this one, for thorium, beta, uh, alpha decay to radium, 
and then actinium, and then beta minus again to thorium, and then um, radium again, and then radon, and all through polonium, and down here to lead 208. So each of these is a K chain, and this is the actinium series, and this is the thorium series like that. Okay, now this is one common way you'll see the decay chain represented, but there's another way you might see it, and that would be on a diagram like this. Now, this is the decay chain diagram. There's less information presented on this diagram, but you can get all of the information you need directly from this diagram. Okay, this looks like a graph or a chart. It's not really a graph. It's a, this is the uranium decay chain. On the y-axis here, we have the mass number, which has the abbreviation A, the symbol A. And the mass number over here, remember the mass number is the number of protons and neutrons that are present in the nucleus. And you can see the mass numbers on this decay chain, they uh, increase by or decrease. They increase as you go up by 4. So this is 206, and plus 4 is 10, 14, 18, all the way up to 238. And you'll see in a moment why that is like that. And then over here on the x-axis, we have the atomic number, which has the abbreviation or the symbol Z. And you can see this goes from 80 to 81, all the way up here to number 92. Now, because there's not a whole lot of information that's presented on this um, diagram, it's very good if you have a periodic table out in front of you so that you can see the elements, and you should maybe know some of these elements like <clears throat> uranium is number 92. Okay, now, we have each of these dots, and each of these dots represents a radioactive isotope, and you can see sometimes we have a red arrow, and sometimes we have a blue arrow, and I'm going to kind of come over here and try to explain to you what those blue and those red arrows mean. So we're going to start with an example here of a dot or a point right here, and sometimes the graph or this diagram, they're not a graph, but this diagram goes over here with a red arrow. What does that red arrow mean? Well, the red arrow means that we're moving over one to the right, and that means that the atomic number is increasing by one. The mass number is staying the same, but the atomic number, in this case, that's just the Beispiel here, as an example here, we're going from 83 to 84, and that means that we're gaining a proton, and where does that proton come from? Well, that proton comes when in radioactive decay or during radioactive decay, there's too many neutrons, so a neutron will turn into a proton. So you should, and the atomic number goes up by one. So you should know by now that means that that occurs during beta minus decay. During beta minus decay, a proton turns into a neutron, and the atomic number goes up by one, and the mass number stays the same because protons and neutrons are both part of the mass number, the mass number being the sum of the number of neutrons and protons in the atom's nucleus. Okay, now, what about the uh, uh, the blue? We're going to actually wait for the blue in just a moment. Now, you'll notice there's also, or you should know, there's also beta plus decay. Now, beta plus is not represented on here, but just to be complete, beta plus would be when the atomic number goes down by one, decreases by one, so we have an arrow and a point like that, and we have the atomic number decreasing by one, but once again, the mass number staying the same, and that would occur during beta plus decay, because during beta plus decay, we have too many protons, and a proton turns into a neutron, and that's beta plus. Now, once again, I just want to point out, beta plus is not represented on this diagram, but it is one of the common forms of radioactive decay, although actually beta minus is much more common. Okay, now we have the blue arrow. Now, what does the blue arrow mean? Now, the blue arrow means we're going to cross all the way down here, and you should know we started here with an atomic number of 83 for this example, and then we went to atomic number 81, and that means the atomic number, the number of protons, the atomic number decreased by 2, and you'll remember we said each jump on this grid, each grid here is, each graduation here on this grid is 4, and that means the mass number went down by 4. So you should be familiar with the type of radioactive decay that occurs when the atomic number decreases by 2 and the mass number decreases by 4. That means that that isotope has emitted a helium nucleus, a, so to speak, helium nucleus, and that is means we just had alpha decay. So once again, the red line is, uh, the red arrow is beta minus, 
We don't have the orange one here, but this would be beta plus, and the blue arrows, they represent alpha decay. All right, and you can see that from the change in the atomic numbers and mass numbers, or for beta, the mass number doesn't change. Okay, so let's start up here and talk about what happens as we go down here. So what isotope is this, rep does this dot here, this is the uranium series, but you should remember uranium is number 92. So we're going to put down that we have the, uh, 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 the mass number, we'll do the mass number first, is 238. You should read it right off the diagram. You can see this is mass number 238. It's kind of like a graph, just read it right off the graph. And then you go down here and you have an atomic number of 92. And that should remember, that you should remember that 92 for atomic number is uranium. And though this point represents, on the decay chain, represents uranium 238. Like that, And then we're going to, on the next slide, we're going to go through a series. I think I'm going to do four or five of these, and then we'll do the very last two down here to see how we can get to um, 82 as lead, how we can get to lead 206 in two different ways. So let's go on to the next slide, and we're going to start up here at uranium-238, and I think we're going to do five different decays, and you can just see how we write down the decay equations for this decay chain. Okay, so here's the diagram we had in the previous slide, and we said here this is uranium-238. Now let's just go through again. We have 238 for the mass number, 92 for the atomic number, so we write those down like that, and we see that that's uranium. You have to, if you don't know, you have to look on your periodic table and look for element 92, and element 92 is uranium. Okay, then we're going to write the decay equation, so we put the arrow to represent that we're going to move over to the products now, and then we are going to say that for, we know that this represents alpha decay, so we're just going to write down, okay, our uh, alpha particle, which is our helium nucleus, for 2 helium 4, and we know that that is going to come out of our uranium 238, so that means we're going to subtract nine, 2 from 92, and we have a new atomic number of 90, because during alpha decay, we lose two protons, they're emitted with our helium particle and therefore our helium nucleus, and the mass number is going to decrease by 4, and 238 minus 4 is 234. And if you look on your periodic table, if you don't know already, that that is thorium, and we have thorium just like that. So this equation represents this decay that starts here with uranium-238 and ends up with thorium-234. You can see 90 and 234. It matches. You can check right there. 234 and 90 like that. Okay, now we're going to do this one. We look over here. We remember that's beta minus, so we're going to start with this material. Okay, we're going to write a new de decay equation, and all we're going to do is start with this very same material. This was the parent. This was the daughter. Now for this decay, this becomes the parent, and it's beta minus, and you should remember with beta minus, and you can see from the diagram that the atomic number goes up by one. The mass number stays the same, and if you look on your periodic table, you'll see that element number 91 is protactium. Okay, now there are some other products which you should be aware of uh, for beta, uh, beta minus decay. One is the electron. We also lose an electron. That's our beta particle. The electron is actually the beta particle. And then we have our anti-electron neutrino like that. Okay, so that is the first decay and then the second decay. And then we're going to do, I think, two more. So once again, we had our parent and our daughter, and now we're going to start with the daughter as the parent for the next one. So this is for going from 91 to 92 uh, as atomic number. Once again, we're, we know it's beta minus because we're gaining an, an atomic number, and so it's going to be 92, and that's going to be 234. You can see the mass number stays the same. And then number 92, now we're back to uranium, okay? We're back to uranium, but it's not the same uranium. This was uranium-238. This is uranium-234. You can see we come down this way, and we go back to uranium. Okay, we went from uranium to protectium, and then to um, uh, thorium, and then to protectium, and then back to uranium. And now we're going to go back here. And you should notice that means we're going to go back to thorium. We start with our same uranium-234, helium uh, for alpha decay, and we got 90 and 230, and we're back to thorium. But of course, this thorium is not the same as this thorium. This thorium is 234. This is a different isotope, 230. And we'll do one more with 230 for thorium, and we have alpha decay again, 
and we're back here, not back here, but now we're at radium. So that is those five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, and now we're right here. We could write them all out, but once you've done a few like that, I think you should get the hang of it. Okay, now on the last slide here, we're just going to show you how we can get here to lead 206. There's two ways. We can go from 81 with um, beta minus decay, or we can go from here with alpha decay, and we're going to start here with um, do the alpha, excuse me, the beta minus decay, and we're going to start with thallium. Thallium is element number 81, and you can see it's thallium 206, and we're going to have beta minus, so we're going to have uh, increase in the atomic number of one. The mass number stays the same. We have our electron, which is our beta particle, and our anti-electron neutrino. Sometimes people don't write this uh, down, but they just stop there with the electron, and you can see we end up with lead 206, lead 206 being a stable, one of the stable isotopes of lead. And we can do the other one where we start with number uh, element 84, which is polonium, polonium 210. And then we're going to go through, you can see this, uh, because we lose four for the mass number and lose two for the atomic number, we know that's alpha decay. And we start with, uh, start, we end with 82 and 206. And that is uh, lead is element number 82, and that's also 206. So you can see there's two different ways that you can come down here to the stable isotope at the end of the decay chain. The decay chain, you start off with a radioactive isotope, uranium-238. You go through all this series, all this whole chain, and you end up here with stable lead-206. Okay, so there you go. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please do all of the following five things. Subscribe to my channel. Click the notifications bell so you don't miss anything. Uh, give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. And don't forget that sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends and show them just how much you care. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.